you're fat, say this with me. The voice that tells me to fear my body is not my own. If it's not yours, then whose voice is it? You have some kind of like weird voice in your head, like that's not you. Maybe that voice that you're hearing in your head telling you that being fat has consequences. Maybe, perhaps, hear me out on this. <laughs> I might be saying like a really crazy take here. This might be a really hot take, but maybe that voice telling you that information, maybe there's some validity to it. Maybe, hold up now. I know that might be a little crazy to say. Maybe, perhaps, that voice is actually maybe right. Not all the time, because sometimes I have voices in my head that tell me things like, dude, you know, do what you got to do. Go over there, suck that guy off, whatever. But you don't do it because you know that that's not who you are and you're not gay or maybe maybe you are gay. But, you know, regardless, you're not going to just randomly be mouth lurping random guys. But the point I'm making is maybe sometimes the voice or like I hear oftentimes these people will say like, oh, no, I, for some reason, like these people will sit there and say obvious facts. Like, I feel like my body is not healthy. I feel like. Uh, my body is 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 telling me something and then they'll completely ignore it and put themselves in vacuum chambers to like reassure themselves or they're like they're, what I've heard multiple times is like they'll look in the mirror and they'll try to tell themselves or convince themselves that they're okay even though obviously being in a very obese body is inherently not healthy thank you for protecting me I think that's beautiful. What a beautiful statement. Thank you for protecting me. My body is protecting me. You're right. Your body is protecting you, but I think to what degree is very interesting because you are very, very fat. And I agree, like maybe you have a little bit more durability to certain traumas. I've heard literally fat people say, I can get hit by cars and not suffer, suffer, suffer any type of damage, which is very interesting of a statement. I don't even know why this would be like a, can you imagine something like that? At least you have a claim. I became fat because if I ever get hit by a car, I will suffer less damage compared to the person that isn't as fat as me, which is crazy. It's a weird superpower because you're getting this buff, which I don't even think that that buff is really even anything at all because it's like you're not even going to be able to get up off the floor if you do get by the car. I don't advocate for people to get by cars, by the way. And hot take, I know. But you're telling me this, but what about like all the other negative effects of being fat? You know, like diabetes and high blood pressure and never having anybody that thinks you're attractive. None of those things are, no, just like, we're not going to talk about those things. Um, yeah, but I think your body is going to protect you. But I think that you're literally looking at your body protecting you as like a 30% buff compared to like, for instance, my body, which would be like 100%. If you know what I'm talking about, like you're literally working off a disadvantage because your body is so incredibly, I don't know, man. It's just it, unhealthy. It's just, I, can I say it another way than that? Your body is inherently unhealthy and it's, yeah, it is still protecting you, but it's like the difference between somebody saying like, oh yeah, my fence is so incredibly amazing, but it's like a dilapidated wooden fence and it's like barely holding together compared to your neighbor who has this uh, amazing fucking beautiful fence and it's like painted white and there's like fucking, I don't know, dude, there's like blood all over it because people try to got in. I don't know, dude. The point I'm making is like your fence is fucking suck dick compared to my fence, which, you know, is like barbarian fence, dude. I am safe now. Sure. So y'all know those videos where they're gym bros lifting. Is that a shirt? What is that? Where'd you look, bro? I think you could wear whatever you want, but sometimes I look upon outfits and I think, how sustainable is this? Because I feel like if you were to run at an increased speed, do they just do they just come out? Is that's my question. Do they just flop out? Because I know that if I'm not wearing underwear, for instance, you could see full nutsack sometimes if I'm wearing like shorts or something like that. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not wearing like overly small shorts, right? But sometimes you could see like the indentation or something like that. Like there's some, I need some comfort. I know a lot of guys, per, I know personally speaking, I know a bunch of guys that do this. They go, David, I wear briefs. David, I wear boxers. But the ones I hear the most are almost always boxers. And I've worn boxers, of course. And I don't like it. I don't like that my nutsack is not being constricted or at least put in place, you know? And these dudes, they'll be playing basketball. I'm friends with a lot of black dudes. They're playing basketball, dude. They're jumping all over the place. And their nutsacks are just free balling, just sliding against their legs, dude, for just all over the place. And I'm just sitting there like, how can you put up with that? You know, how could you put up when well, you're playing basketball and your nuts are also playing basketball. And I'm I'm watching this happen. I'm not watching it like I'm seeing nut sacks. But you know what I'm talking about. Like I know this is happening. And I personally, I'm not wearing briefs. I'm not wearing like tidy whities like I'm Hank Hill. But 
I'm wearing boxer briefs, right? So like they're more tight, they're more compact to my body. I feel like a superhero when I wear them. And I think they're personally the best choice. I'm not wrong on this opinion. I think boxer briefs are meta. I think those are the better options. By the way, your face makeup is way too dark in comparison to the rest of your body. And it's fine if you want to do that, but uh, it, it, it's too dark. It's just way too dark. Oh, I can handle my big girls. I can wake up up to 315 pounds. Oh, we got to go back because like, I <laughs> I talk too much, so I, I didn't hear what she said. She's talking really low. Lifting weights and talking about, oh, I can handle my big girls. I can wake up up to 315 pounds. Which is bullshit, by the way. Like, if you're if you're a big gym bro guy and you can lift a lot of weight, and you go because I can lift a lot of weight, therefore I can lift a really really big bitch or whatever you want to say. I think personally that's probably a facade. That's a fugazi. It's not real because there's a big difference between being able to bench press a large amount of weight and having that weight be equal on both sides. And then picking up like a big girl, that's going to be very different because the weight is not going to be equally distributed. Maybe she has she has more weight on her ankle. Maybe she's got more weight on her neck. It's going to be very difficult for you to weigh. And I don't even know why this is even like a, oh yeah, guess what? I'm a big man. So like if, if the situation ever called for it, I will be able to lift you up. What, what, what type of positions do you think you're going to be? First of all, that's incredibly inappropriate to even hit a woman up and be like, hey, listen, I'm, <laughs> I could bench press a lot of weight. So you being big is not a big issue for me. That's crazy. First of all, dude, super disrespectful. I don't care what anybody fucking says. Okay. Even if you're like a super nuanced fat lady and you're like totally okay with being fat and you want guys, whatever. It's just, I think it's disrespectful regardless. When is it ever going to even come up as like a thing? Are you having sex with fat ladies on walls? Like, is this like a, a new age Spider-Man type of thing? I don't know. I've never had sex with somebody on the wall and I don't think, is it good? I don't know. I've never done that. But if you're sitting here and you're going, I'm a gym bro, I can, I can bench press big women and I can, I can deadlift 350 pounds. Therefore, I can pick up big girls. Sure. But like, what are you going to do when you have them in the air? Like, are you going to, like, Randy Savage them? Like, are you going to suplex them? Like, what are you doing? You, like, what is the order of operations, right? What position do you even have to be in? Is this something you do on the first date? Is this something you do on the last date? Like, what do you do? Because I really feel like once you do that, it's probably over. It's probably a wrap. Because this woman's going to realize, wait, he might be able to lift me up. But the practicality of this particular lift is obsolete. It's not going to do anything for me. I could be wrong. But, um, like I said, I've never lifted up big women. Uh, I can lift up some women. It depends on how tall you are, though. I've lifted up probably two or three women in my entire life. I don't like it, personally. I don't know. I remember this one girl. She was like, oh, can you lift me up, David? I was like, I don't know, probably. And she was like, uh, she didn't even ask me. Like, we were just hugging, and then she just jumped on me. And I was just thinking, like, you that's dumb. Because, like, what if I didn't have the strength to lift you up? You would have just fell on the fucking floor and I wouldn't have been upset because, like, you you sprung that upon yourself, you know? Like, that's not my fault that you fell on the floor. You should have realized. I mean, I was able to hold her up. But the point I'm making is don't trust that somebody can do that for you. I don't even trust a guy that says he can lift a lot of weight and, therefore, he can lift up you being a big woman. I don't think that's even – I don't care. That's not, it's not sustainable, dude. What are you doing? And you're just like, oh, okay, I see you. Come with this one on me. Where are you going dressed like this? Where did you – where did you get this, dude? Is this a necklace? <laughs> what is this outfit, bro? Where do you wear this, man? Anyway, let's hear about these these guys and these. Why are you wearing earmuffs inside? <sighs> I just I don't know. But then again, you have to realize they're using us to gain followers. Not now. I'm not saying it's everybody, but if they really, really, really loved us, they you would see their follower list with plus size people in their list. That's such a bad take oh my god so you think because this guy by the way any dude that's on tiktok going like you know what these guys that do like the lip sync videos where they're like hey bad girl you've been a really disgustingly bad girl recently and it's like all lip sync like it's from a movie or something like that and the girl goes like oh my god he's, oh my god really and he's like yeah girl and you know i'm gonna need to spank you and the guy's like licking his lip or whatever and maybe he has like a Maybe he has like a tooth that's like a uh, vampire tooth or something like that. And I'm watching this and I'm like, this is the cringiest shit I've seen in a long fucking time. But you'll see a lot of women in the comment section like, oh my God, you're so hot. And I'm just thinking like, really? That's crazy. You think this guy is hot? All he's, he's like in reciting the poetry from like basketball diaries. Like, what are you talking about? Anyway, I guess it's besides the point. So people building 
genres based off of like, oh yeah, guess what? I can lift up big women. You're devaluing them. But like, aren't you building followers based off the fact that you don't like that these guys are building followers based off of that? How does that even make sense? Why does it, I don't understand why these people have an issue with people, how they build their followings. Like, dude, if people want to watch these people for what, I guess if they want to watch their cringe ass content with them, like talking about how they can have sex with a large amount of big girls. And I don't mean large amount as in like more than one. I mean, a large amount of person, you know, like more than one in terms of person, you know, whatever the point I'm making is why does it matter? Why do you, why do you care that much when you're doing the exact same thing? And by the way, you got some kind of like chocolate milk stain down here. I don't know what that is, but it, it shouldn't matter that bad. And then also, I don't think you should be like shitting on these people because they're building followers based off of like thirsty fans or whatever they're doing. I don't know, man, whatever. You would see plus size people represented on their page. I say, why do I have to represent plus size people? That didn't make any fucking sense. These dudes are like, these are thirst pages, right? Aren't you talking about the guys that are literally out there trying to seduce big women or even a lot of guys will do this. Well, they'll try to guys. I, I, can't, I can't believe I'm even saying this. Cause like I, I, I could have sworn this was like something that only women did, but for some reason, there's a lot of guys trying to really, really hard seduce a lot of people and they'll take whatever they can get. So what I often see is like these guys will sit there and they'll go, oh, I love big girls. Big girls are the best. They're the bestest. I love that shit. The big thick thighs and you know, the big voluptuous belly fold. Oh, it's so good in my mouth or whatever. Right. And like, I remember I saw this one guy, he said that he would literally lick a woman's, he would lick a woman's fat folds. Like he was playing the, the, a flute or like a, uh, what are those things called? Like a harmonica or something like that. And I was just thinking like, that's gross, man. First of all, I don't even know if that's sexual. It's kind of like when somebody tells you like, oh, I, I just want to lick every inch of you. And I'm like, I don't, I don't, that's gross. What do you, <laughs> why, why every inch of me? I just want maybe like four, you know, maybe I'm, t maybe like only the nine inches, you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> but it's just, it's just cringe. It's just, it's just cringe. I don't know why you think that these people have to have representation on their page for fat women or fat people in general because they're trying to seduce them. That doesn't even make any fucking sense. You obviously, you do you not know what TikTok is? These guys are there for thirst. They're trying to seduce people. people. Oh yeah. What they're, what they're doing, what these guys are doing is like, they're claiming one thing, but they would never date a fat girl. They're just making it seem like they would, right? So like they're putting on this big display, they're peacocking and they're going, check me out. I'm so incredibly nuanced and I can, I represent for big girls. And I think that big girls are awesome and, and really awesome and great people, but in the DMs, but in the real life, they're never going to, they're just saying this shit so they can get attention. And when that does happen, eventually, I don't know how many big girls are hitting them up in correlation to non-big girls, but I, I'm guessing it is probably like one to 15, like one average girl compared to 15. I don't fucking know. But the point I'm making is they're not, I can't say this across the board, but I pretty much, I, I would say that it'd be like, they would just only really go for that, that, that mid-sized girl. I don't even know why I'm fucking saying mid-size, mid-size or lower girl. In their list, you would see plus-size people represented on their page. They're using us to gain followers because we're giving them empathy. You need to blow your nose, man. I don't know what's up with this right now. Why are you so congested? But uh, yeah, I don't care. Like, why Why do you care so much? That That's like somebody going on your page and being like, why don't you have people that eat at KFC or like McDonald's or Burger King or any of these other fast food places because you're a fat girl. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's so fucking dumb. It's like somebody, like, why would you make that correlation that because these guys are saying they like fat women, how are they even supposed to dictate who follows them? Are they supposed to only follow? Like so many people on TikTok don't even follow people back. You understand that? Like you'll come across a page with zero followers and they'll have like a million followers. So like, what are they supposed to do? What do you like? How do you even determine if this guy is like actually feeding off big women or maybe he's genuine or not. You can't know. And like to make this claim is fucking crazy. It's ignorant. And not only is it ignorant, it's dumb. I don't even know what the fuck you're even arguing about. No, let's not do that. Okay. This is what I'm missing, these you know what else we need to do, dude? We need to get these fucking earmuffs off, dude. What did you do, man? Like you skinned a Muppet? Why is it? Where'd you get this? Her cat because she was giving it. Is she wearing makeup in the face, right? Why is her... I could be wrong and maybe I'm just being racist here, but I'm just presuming that this is makeup because I'm seeing like some here and some here, the foundation or whatever is darker, right? Am I wrong on that? Am I racist? Somebody let me know. <laughs> Somebody let me know if I'm racist. We need it. But she on her weight loss journey right now, so I can't judge her. She put on some fucking makeup, though. Come on, don't fuck with me. That's fucking makeup. I'm not racist, okay? I just confirmed it. She's, she drew, I, unless... This is fucking makeup, right? Makeup. Ma I don't know why her eyebrows are so incredibly like she just plucked them, I guess. 
I don't know. I don't know. I don't know, dude. And she got the freckles, which are inconsistent. I don't know, dude. I don't know why everybody's trying to look like Chucky nowadays with these freckles, bro. But this is makeup, right? It's too dark. It's too dark. Not your shade. Fat Allure Podcast. I don't know why so many people have podcasts nowadays, dude. And they think that, man, they should just invite me on, dude. I would love to go on this person's podcast, even though they only get like one view. It's fine, dude. I would go on this person's podcast. Invite me on. I'll talk. Just a reminder, you do not have to be skinny to be pretty. You do not have to be skinny to be pretty. You know what the biggest myth in plus size fashion is? It's that fat people, especially the larger sizes, like a 5X, 6X and above, don't want actually fashionable clothes. That we don't want the newest styles. We don't want to follow the trends. That we don't want the bright, fun colors. I've never heard that. I've always heard these people complain that they can never find clothes and they want to dress cute and they want to dress like super fashionable and this and that. So I've never heard this, but I guess you can just kind of say anything and people will believe you nowadays, which is, I guess, fine. But uh, I often think like if you are, what did she say? Like a size 6X, 7, 8, 9X, whatever. I always think, okay, I get it. You want to buy clothes, which is fine. But I don't think it's like very reasonable for you to go, I want to buy clothes even though I'm 400 pounds. Do you not think that it's going to be difficult to have those particular types of clothes fit you appropriately, dude? And then also, I'm not saying you shouldn't wear clothes, but you have a lot of other problems that I feel like you should probably be working on instead of worrying about whether or not this particular shirt is going to fit you in an appropriate way. You're literally every single day like deteriorating your lifespan. I don't, that's just really what it comes down to. And I really feel like, you should have different priorities. You get what I'm talking about? But, you know, Slay Queen, go off. You know, talk about it. Go ahead. That we don't want the fun patterns. No, we want all of it. Okay. We want to be yeah. treated. I mean, you want more than that, huh? I mean, you already getting more than that, so. We don't want the fun patterns. No, we want all of it. We want to be treated just like everybody else. Yeah, but you're not like everybody else. I don't know why this is such a, like, a sediment. Like, oh... I want to be treated just like everybody else, even though obviously I don't apply by all these other different standards. And I think even though my physical appearance is drastically different compared to all these other people's and it's easier to create clothing for thinner people because you can create just basic generic sizings and it would pretty much fit everybody. I know that I don't fit in any of those categories, but guess what? I just want to be treated like everybody it's just like, what are you talking about, right? You, uh, you, none of your beliefs are centered in reality. It don't make sense to do this shit. But anyway, yeah, go ahead. I mean, I want a lot of things too, you know, especially like maybe a Tesla, a gajillion dollars, a spoon plated in orange peels or something like that. Whatever. I want a lot of things, but that's not like, it's not plausible to do any of that stuff. You understand? But anyway, go off. And have the same stylish clothes as everybody else. Yeah, but you, okay, go ahead. And... I would really like retailers to get their shit together and figure this out because you would make so much more money. I don't know. I don't think these people understand when they say like, oh, you need to figure this shit out because like we would spend money. First of all, the clothes that you guys are asking for, when people say plus size clothing, right? Hear me out. When people say plus size clothing, they're not talking about people that are like, 350 400 500 600 fucking pounds those people are not shopping those people are like bed bound those people can't even walk let alone go to a fucking retailer and try on clothes like the simple act of putting your arms up to put a shirt on is like infeas is infeasible for most of these people and you're sitting here going we need these clothes because i want to wear them or fat people need to wear them first of all you're in a very very niche category like not many of you people are even alive let alone going to be out there trying to buy clothes there's that and then two clothes are not going to fit you universally in the sense of like if you try to buy a shirt and you're 450 and then karen over there or jacob or something buys that same shirt it's not going to fit him or her in the same way that's going to fit you because guess what the clothes and how they fit your body are going to be determined based off of what your body looks like if you got a lot of gut if you got a lot of belly you got a lot of back fat and then Maybe Karen or, or Stephanie has like a lot of leg. You know, she's got a lot of big leg, but she don't have a lot of gut. Then guess what? The shirt's going to fit different. You understand? So when you say uh, we want these good clothes, it's not as easy as saying that. Because like it would be like saying we need these clothes. If this is a 6 or like let's go. This is a 10X and this is a 10X, but they're two different types of shirts. That's what you're going to have to do. You're going to have to like size them differently, but it's never going to be a win-win because 
every fucking fat body is super dynamic. You guys hold weight in different areas. It's not just something as simple as like, we'll just create two or three different types of like clothes in different sizes or like the same style. No, that's not how it's going to fucking work. You guys, none of you guys are the same. None of you guys. Whereas for me, right, I'm like 150. If another guy that was 150, he's going to have, he's going to wear the same shirt as me and it's going to be universal. So you guys are asking for something unrealistic. I do not think that this is going to be lucrative. And I know this because big clothing brands like Old Navy and other places, they had plus size clothing for a long time. Early 2022, I believe like 2021 or 2022, when they stopped, Old Navy did have plus sizes. And a lot of fat creators were like, oh man, Old Navy's so great. But they weren't making enough money for it to be sustainable. And they saw they had to stop. So even this particular argument point of like, it's it's so lucrative, you'll make a lot of money is bullshit. You won't make a lot of money. And we know that. We've seen it, dude. If Old Navy can't make money off of it, what the fuck do you think is like, you think like smaller retails? No, dude, they don't have the bread to sustain that kind of thing. If you just did this, if you allowed the fat people to be fat, but also buy cool clothes from you. You guys got other problems to worry about, man. I think you guys got to chill back on these clothing, these clothing brands and shit like that, dude. Like I said, it's, insus- it's not sustainable. You know what you should do instead, though? It, since you guys always have problems of not being able to find clothes, why don't you just lose some fucking weight, dude? You know, lower the deficit, lower the calories, get a deficit, go work out a little bit, and then booyah, dude, you'll put yourself in a place where you can actually buy clothes and fit. That's all we're asking for. It's, it's a lot. It's a big ask. That's like somebody going like, all I'm... All I'm asking for is just to be sucked up every single day. Um, and I want a big, busty Latina that's obviously, you know, like I can call mommy or whatever, dude. I want a big Tesla, a big, like, you know, cyber truck. I also want like, a jump like jillion dollars. And I want people to just, when they see me, to just do this every time because my penis is so enlarged that I that's just what I deserve. That's all I want. That's it. That's all. It's not that much. Not that much. We talking about not that much. This is how dumb that is. Stop putting Mickey on everything. Stop putting cold shoulders on everything. I'm so tired. Why are you out of breath from sitting down? Was that a long monologue for you? Of wearing, of the only option being skinny jeans. Those are clearly out. I would like to be able to shop in store, get your largest size in store, Damn. and get the same patterns and colors in store. Yeah, but you're. Why the damn you automatically go into the largest size? That's crazy. How big are you? The fact that you had to go like, I just want to go into the store and get the largest size. Like you, you're automatically assuming that everything, like you're only gonna go for the largest size. It's crazy. And must be big. Be able to get all sizes or all styles in your larger size. What's a scam that's become so normalized that we don't even realize it's a scam anymore? Weight loss diets. How many different times have you gone on a diet to lose weight? Has it been sustainable for over five years or have you had to find- Dude, Five years is such a long time though, man. If you if you go on a weight loss diet and you've been on you've lost that weight for five years, that's pretty good. That's really good, matter of fact. I don't know why these people shit on that time period. Like five years is somebody's entire life, right? There's some babies out there. That's like their entire lives. You shitting on those babies' lives, dude? Fuck off me, okay? If you lose weight for five years, you did something right. That's okay. And if you rebounded or whatever the fuck, I don't know how how much longer do you want these people to fucking lose weight? Like, what is long-term weight loss for you? Because if somebody said, hey, have you ever been into a long-term relationship? And somebody said, yes, I've been in a relationship for five plus years. Are, is that not like long-term to you? Like, I really want to know where their spectrum is because oftentimes I hear them say, long-term weight loss is not sustainable, but then they quote things like five plus years. Dude, five years is a pretty good fucking amount of time. You understand? That's a that's a good amount of time. And I don't know what who would not consider that to be long-term, but go ahead, bro. Obviously, it don't work. Some other type of program, some other wagon to get back on. It is honestly genius. It's a product that doesn't work that when it inevitably fails. You know what else is a really good product? It's crazy that you would say that weight loss doesn't work. Like what diets that contain weight loss are not sustainable. But you know what else is like really good? Because these people always want to talk about the oh capitalism and it's, it's diet culture that's keeping you in check and they want to keep you thin so they can monetize you and they can do this and that. And I'm always thinking like, isn't it probably a little bit more true on the other side like they want to keep you guys fat so you guys keep buying these disgustingly high calorie foods that are really really high in value going to burger king going to mcdonald's kfc all these other places so they can keep you fat and that you keep using uber eats and all these other places what what, what am i paying for They're like a gym membership for ten dollars a month and i'm eating like in whole foods that i'm creating at my house is like i feel like these people don't understand that even though they want to sit there and say that thin people are the ones being farmed 
especially for diet culture, whatever the fuck. I really disagree with that. And I would actually put it so much more on the other side. You guys are being farmed. Like it's a, you guys are fucking being farmed so much heavily. Like you guys are the main people they go to when they advertise for like any types of new foods or anything like that. You blame the consumer for it not working when we've had data showing that diet yeah, you blame the consumer for not working because, uh, like, if you go on a weight loss diet, it's really up to you depending on oh, – I don't know what you mean by a weight loss diet. I mean, it's, it's pretty ambiguous of a thing. But if we're just talking about a deficit, which is calories in, calories out, yeah, you have to blame that person because ultimately they're the one that are, that's doing that, okay? So why, who else are we to blame besides that person in the same way that obviously we have to blame this person for becoming fat? If they're an adult and they have the ability to reason and they have the ability to make their own decisions, who else can we blame besides that individual – for what they did to themselves. That doesn't make any sense at all. That's like going and watching a movie by yourself, nobody in the room, and then after the movie's done, you call up your friend like, bro, you fucking asshole. I can't believe you made me watch this. You fucking made me watch it. I had no choice in watching that terrible, disgusting movie. You're a fucking bad per and hang up. That's what you're, that's, that's basically what, it actually makes more sense for that one because you probably have a friend in that scenario. But in this scenario, I don't think this pe these people have no friends, man. Or they just have people around them that are just continuously saying the same shit. But it, no, there's no other person you can blame but yourself. You're your own person. Diets do not work for the long term for the majority of people for decades. It's not new information. But if you keep blaming yourself, you'll think it's because you don't have the willpower. You haven't found the right program. Oftentimes, I feel like it's probably beneficial to blame yourself. Because at least that in, in that particular setting or scenario, you can do something about it, right? At least you can adjust the behavior. If you're sitting here and you're going, this diet didn't work because of systemic fat phobia or genetics or some other bullshit, which obviously don't make any fucking sense. Because ultimately it is about calories in, calories out and working out or uh, diet and exercise, right? That's all it is. If you're, if you're deeming it as something that you can't control, you're never going to change it. You're just going to sit there and perpetually be upset or depressed because your life sucks so much dicks because you can't get out of a seated position without being out of breath. That is terrible. At least in the other scenario where you can admit, okay, I didn't do something right. Maybe, even though I was on the deficit, maybe I was doing something else. Maybe I was maybe that yogurt that I ate was maybe a little bit too high calories. Maybe those Twizzlers that I was body slamming or that fried chicken or something, whatever the fuck you were eating. Maybe that was like the reason why I didn't lose weight or maybe I just didn't do it in a very successful way. That's probably the reason most of the time. I don't think it's that far fetched or like you're a bad person for at least acknowledging that maybe you had some contributing to the trauma that you had or like not being able to fulfill it uh, all the way. It's like it's like that with anything. Like you ever been in a relationship with somebody or talk to somebody that's been in a relationship and then you ask them, hey, why did the relationship end? And that person go them, that person, the other person did it. It wasn't me. It was all that person. You can't take accountability for anything. Like, obviously, it wasn't all that person, you know? Like, there are very few times and scenarios where you break up with somebody and it's fully on one person. I would go as far as say never. It's never going to happen. But a lot of people would say that. And I've talked to a lot of people that said that. Obviously, all women, I don't talk to guys about. I mean, I do talk to guys about their relationship, but you know what I'm talking about. If that is how you you rationalize that, which is that this other person did all the bad stuff, you're never going to grow. You're just going to continuously be a problem for you. And oftentimes it is because these people continuously find themselves in the same scenarios and consistently blaming it on other people. And the same thing can be said here. If it's not your fault, it can't be. If it's not your fault, then you can't change it. Therefore, there's nothing you can do about it. You're just going to be perpetually fat, obese, and uh, struggling with it for the rest of your life. Huh? Yeah. When in reality, it is not you. It is the fact that the product that you are buying does not work. But what is the product I'm buying? Like, it's just it, it, fucking thermodynamics? What are you talking about? I'm applying myself based off the rules of our universe. <laughs> I'm so, so the universe doesn't fucking work? I didn't know that. Oh my God. I had no fucking idea that the universe itself is just not, nah, not real. And it is not meant to because it's not supposed to be sustainable. It is simply supposed to be profitable. What do you mean by sustainable? Like, it, it, first of all, if somebody loses weight for five years, good job. That was a fucking great job. You did a good fucking thing for yourself. Even if you go back, at least you had that five year stretch of being healthy. So good for you. And profitable in what direction? Like, because I can buy Lululemons now? Like, what are you fucking talking about, man? By the way, if you're going to buy Lululemons, dude, I walked into that fucking store and I saw level, I, I saw fucking $70 leggings. And I looked at that and I, I almost couldn't believe that people were buying them. And there was a security guard at the door, which was crazy. Like, what are you fucking guarding right now? These fucking $70 Lululemon leggings, dude? And the fucking Crocs that are not actually Crocs or the lemon version of them? Whatever, bro. Look, 
it's not profitable is such a fucked up statement be given the fact that is it profitable on the other side like are these people that are uber eating every single fucking night terrible disgusting diets they never they never cook food at home and when they do it's like disgusting food because none of them know how to fucking cook what are you talking about first of all there's even if you wanted to look at it like that can we at least see it from the best of the best of two evils can we see it that way because even if you look at it from that way you're gonna see it on my point of view because at least in my point of view if you lose weight for a certain period of time which i don't even believe by the way five years is like i believe most people if you lose weight odds are most of the time you're gonna develop skills and you're probably going to put those skills in for the rest of your life i don't think most people right they don't make purposeful changes most people just kind of like go around their lives and they just kind of do shit until something works, right? That's most people. And it's very, very, uh, it's very, very unique for somebody to actually have deliberate change in their life. You understand? Like most people are passively changing themselves. And either way is fine because that's, I'm not here to critique how most people do shit. I do shit like that all the time, passively. But if you're out here making deliberate changes, that's super serious. And odds are, if you're making deliberate changes, those changes are going to stick with you because you worked very hard to make those changes a part of you, the new you, right? Like I know when I started working out and I started learning about diet, now I have this information for the remainder of my life. Like I'm always going to know about calories in, calories out. I'm always going to know about how to lift or how, how to pick up certain weights in optimal directions to ensure that I'm getting proper growth or whatever the fuck. You understand what I'm saying? This stuff is going to stick with you because you made deliberate choices in order to stay with that, right? And I don't know why these people are sitting here complaining that weight loss doesn't work or whatever the fuck. Even if it was your, even if we did agree with you, which I don't, if we did agree with you. I'm still in a better situation because even if you did lose that weight for five years, which is a crazy good amount of time, at least you had that five years where you were healthy and you did pick up good skills and XP on how to progress your life. And you could probably just go back. Muscle, mon mus muscle memory does exist. So anyway, I don't know. Comment on your body. Don't actually care about your health or they wouldn't say shit like that. If you've ever had the misfortune of being on the receiving end of a, I'm just concerned about your health. You know how uncomfortable that made you. Defensive, irritable. It was not a good experience. Cause that shit is manipulative. To, to what degree? To what degree, dude? To what degree? Because sometimes that that conversation that you're having that makes you uncomfortable irritable whatever the fuck she said is necessary and i'm sick of people in these communities saying that it's never necessary or it's never a good thing to have a conversation with somebody that could hurt them if it's in their benefit i don't know why these people are incapable of having serious conversations <laughs> to me it just kind of seems like you guys are caught in this bubble of i need to feel safe constantly and anything outside that bubble regardless of whether or not it's good for me is bad and i don't understand why these people think like that they, it, these people are literally incapable of. because if i have any reaction that's not appreciative or apologetic for the way that my body looks i'm unreasonable i'm overreacting but i just love you so much that i care True. you love me so much that you're like i'm worried you're gonna die yeah surely this will have no effect on my mental health why does it like first of all i get it yes it will it will make you change some things but all obviously what am I supposed to, like, if I'm seeing you, okay, and you're literally suffering from something that could be changed, no problem, and I have the means at, to which to help you get through that process, and the way that I can help you is by initiating a conversation, a conversation, words, being exchanged from person to person, if that is the, the triggering factor of you suffering mental illness, I don't know what to fucking tell you other than you don't, I don't think that you could participate in the real world. There are going to be times and things that happen in your life where it's going to suck a lot of dick and you're just going to have to put up with it because it's just how it is. There are going to be things that you're just not going to like. And I know a lot of people might think like karma or whatever the fuck. I don't know. Like maybe karma exists, but I do also know that during when your life can, when you're, when you're going through your life, you're going to have good moments and you're going to have very suck ass fucking terrible moments. Okay. It's going to be awful. At least when you're taking those moments, at least you have the understanding that these things are existing and you're going through them. This particular scenario is like, I just, I just want to be like surrounded by goodness all the fucking time. That's fine. But eventually you're going to hit a wall and something's going to happen to you. It's like, it's like being the really, really restrictive mother, right? When you, when you protect your kid at all costs and you don't let him go outside, you don't let him, let him experience the real world, you're homeschooling him, whatever the fuck, he doesn't have the time, the kid doesn't have the time to experience the world in its own way and build relationships, build tolerance and this and that, and then eventually when the kid turns 18 or, or whatever the fuck and leaves finally, that kid has been pampered for their whole lives and eventually when they hit the real world, they're gonna realize that shit is fucking tough and all the skills that they had picked up through the life of coddling and whatever the fuck is not adequate for handling the real world. 
You're not like, you're like the bubble kid. You know what I'm talking about? Like you put yourself in a fucking bubble so hard that even the simplest, like somebody sneezes on you fucking makes you, you know, your head explode or something like that. Like you're, you have to build up tolerance. It's like the thing with, um, like trees. I, you know what I'm talking about? Like trees. If you, if you grow a tree in like a non, I don't know, like if there's not a lot of wind resistance in the tree, the tree grows up, like it starts growing and it falls over eventually. You know why? Because like, if you grow a tree out in the, the, the woods or whatever, it's going to be, it's going to have to grow under these very severe conditions. It's going to have to put up with a lot of abuse, the wind, the weather, the animals, whatever the fuck, the, the tree has to have a lot of resilience to grow. So when it grows, it eventually grows very big and strong. It has the ability to withstand all these forces. But if you grow it in a house and it doesn't have any of that stuff to deal with, it's going to grow up in a fucking pussy, in a pussy way. And it's going to be a bitch. You know, it's a bitch ass tree. And the point I'm making is it's okay to deal with stuff and it's okay to have situations where you have to deal with trauma. I don't think that trauma is good for trauma's sake. I know a lot of guys that think that like, oh, I have to deal with a lot of badness in my life in order to be a strong individual. I think there's some, some particular degree like of truth to that. But if you're inducing trauma upon yourself for trauma's sake to become stronger, that's fucking dumb. I would not do that shit. I would just hope that when trauma occurs, you're strong enough to rebound from it instead of just being one of these people that's sitting there going, never talk to me about anything bad ever because if you do, I'm going to feel bad. I don't care. What the fuck is wrong with you, bro? First of all, you're my friend and I'm trying to help you. You know, if I have the ability to do that, I hope that I'm going to do it. That's what friends do from friends, family members, whatever the fuck. At all. And I'm sure that a lot of people that say it, it's not coming from a place of malice. Most of the time it's not. Like most of the time it's not. If, especially if we're talking about friends and family. It's one thing to say that to your friends and family and it's another thing for the internet to say it. Like if somebody on the, in your comment section was like, hey, you look like, I don't know, like Steve Urkel if he was white and he had inverted teeth or something like that. That's one thing. Obviously you probably, probably shouldn't take that serious. You look great. You don't look like Steve Urkel. But if your friends and family are saying it, unless they're being like super, super, like you know it's not coming from a good place, it's probably like there's some validity to it. Maybe take it serious. But it is coming from a place of stigma and shame. Yeah, so what? Sometimes shame is necessary. Sometimes shame is fucking necessary, okay? Like I feel like the amount of times I've seen people post stuff on the internet, maybe there should be a little bit more shame because the amount of times I see people post shit and they have no shame, no pushback at all. And I look at those videos, I'm like, that's fucking cringy as shit. Maybe somebody should actually tell them that that shit is terrible. And science has shown you literally cannot shame someone into lifelong behavioral change. But it's not even about, it's not about that. It's the initiation to get that person at least off the ground, at least having the ability to tell somebody Somebody. listen bro you're conflating like somebody helping another person through the realm of information as shame which is crazy because it could be shame but it could also be hey i think you're dying hey i think you could be healthier if you just did this it's not even shame most of the time most of the time it's literally i think that you're unhealthy and that's not good that's most of the time what are you what are you saying bro why would you have to go this far you might see temporary changes but the reality is self-hatred and health cannot coexist in your body. Think what you want, but you can you're, keep- You're assuming that when somebody hears this information, they're gonna take it to heart and then that's just gonna make them perpetually depressed because their friend thinks that they're unhealthy or their friend thinks that they're disgusting or whatever the fuck. When most of the time, most of the time, if somebody says this information to you and they go, hey, I think that you could improve yourself in this direction, this direction, this direction. If they are, if it's coming from a good place, most of the time that person is going to take it serious and probably do something about it. Or at the very least, take the information and acknowledge it. You know, it, most of the time. If you are sitting there and you have a friend and that person takes that so incredibly heartfelt that they're going to like defriend you or whatever the fuck on Facebook. Or they're going to tell you that you're a terrible, disgusting person or whatever. They're going to go into pre perpetual de depression. That person should never have even been friends with that person to begin with. That person can't handle society. That's what I think personally. They can't even handle most things if that's the case. Keep it to yourself. No, that is, oh. You saying keep it to yourself whilst making a video telling people to keep it to themselves. I just never understand. I'm not one of these people that's gonna sit there and tell you that all information is good. I'm not gonna tell you, I'm, not, I'm never gonna tell you that. I think obviously, there, it, there should be some restrictions on free speech, obviously, right? Like you can't, you can't scream fire in a fucking a, a theater. You can't threaten somebody in a particular type of way. This and that. I feel like these things should obviously, you should have some type of consequences. And I'm not even going to be like all information is good information. Obviously, if somebody has a fucking platform and these people are spewing terrible, disgusting information and the people that watch them that wholeheartedly believe whatever the fuck they're going to say and they do whatever harm that person says like obviously there is limitations to these things i'm not going to sit there and say that every word is as valuable as every word right some information is just actually bad for you okay but i think you should be tolerant enough 
to at least understand where those things are coming from and you should have the deductive abilities to reason for that stuff like you should hear that information and you should be able to intake that information and when you intake it you should have the ability to you should have the ability to tolerate it at the very minimum instead of like crumbling into a million pieces because somebody said something that you disagree with get the fuck over it man and like also it's your friends and family at the very bare minimum like we're talking about friends here right i fucking hope that these people are coming from a place of i'm just trying to help if your new year's resolution was to lose weight and you decided to do that by pursuing a bunch of really rigid habits that ultimately ended up being unsustainable for you so you didn't lose any weight and you fell off the wagon and you're like trying to get back on it this is just a message that there's no wagon you don't have to get back on okay yeah terrible fucking advice by the so what, what so what i'm hearing is like if you started your new year's re resolution of trying to lose weight and then you you stopped or you hit a plateau or like you don't want to lose weight anymore it's okay there's fine actually there's no reason to do it at all because it was never going to work to begin with where are you guys getting this information by the way like how do you even rationalize your lives by thinking that there's no way to lose weight at all even though there's like hundreds of millions of people that have lost weight even recently in like the last 50, 50 years, how can you even say that? We know that thermodynamics exist. What do you think that people are just like fat and they can't do anything about it? What kind of fucking dusted ass take is that? You can stay off. And I you could do a lot of fucking things. What kind of, I hate it when people say you could just do this. You could just do that. Yeah. But like, why would you think that I want to do that? It's unhealthy. Oh, man. There's no wagon. You don't have to get back on. You can stay off. And I encourage you to think, is your goal really that you want to lose weight? Or do you want to feel more confident, secure in your body, feel healthier, happier? Yeah, uh, those that's a consequence of losing weight oftentimes. Especially, I mean, obviously, I, have to, I don't know why I have to specify this, but we're talking about people that are fat. Obviously, this is the whole fucking meaning of the, the video. Talking about somebody that's literally obese trying to lose weight, okay? So if you're fat or obese and you're trying to lose weight, the byproduct of that usually is a healthier lifestyle. Usually. So I don't know why you're even bringing that shit up. I hope that this person, this 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 particular person who's a PhD, is not going to say you can pursue how you can pursue healthy behaviors even within the realm of being obese, which is true. It's true, but I, it's just such a fucking bullshit take. That's like somebody being like chronically drug addicted and being like, well. I know that you have this major debilitating drug condition and like you spend all your money and like you literally sell your ass on the street for money to get drugs. Instead of solving that problem, we're just going to cut your fingernails every once in a while more so. So that way your fingernails, like your hands look more aesthetic. It's not helping. It's not helping, dude. Okay. Like th this is a giant problem. You're, you, if you want to address the 1% issue when you're looking at this big ass 90% problem, what the fuck is the point? And I just invite you to ask, will weight loss be the thing that makes that result happen? Most of the time, yes. Most of the time, yes. Or is it possible that you could engage in some other habits or like work on your body image or just do some things that help facilitate those results that aren't necessarily tied to this idea of weight loss? Why, why do you have to stretch so hard to tell people that weight loss is not real? You know, this this ring around the rosy of trying to convince people that there's no such thing as weight loss or like you can pursue healthy behaviors while being 400 fucking pounds and that doesn't include losing weight. It's just dumb. It's stupid. There's no other way to say it than that. It's not real. I don't know what the fuck these people are talking about so often. Like they sit there and spew this fucking terrible rhetoric and trying to convince people of this bullshit and they're actively hurting people, by the way. Like, you're literally telling people that when they stop losing weight and they just tell them, no, it's fine. Just be unhealthy. No, it's okay. Don't don't try to be better. I know you failed. Wouldn't it be better to tell people, like, even though you failed, it's okay because you had a lot of progress and you did this for a good amount of period of time. All it takes is consistency. And even though you had this problem and you stopped, you can always pick it back up. And it could be a passive thing. Like, it could just be, like, maybe you walk more. Maybe you just eat less. Maybe, as long as you're, like conscious about the decisions that you're making dietarily speaking and exercisingly speaking that's better than nothing you know that's much i feel like that's a much better of a sentiment than forget about it don't do any fucking don't try to lose weight that's fucking never gonna work never gonna work what are you doing stop it instead wash your armpits more frequently it's just, what are you like why do you go so far why go so far Life is too short to spend beating. Life is too short is such a crazy way of saying your life is being shorter because you're fat. Like, we gotta, you're, oh.
oh, beating yourself up about failing another diet. So don't. You can choose something different. <laughs> okay. Yep, just choose something different. Eat like what? Like collect stamps? Oh no, I I even though this like weight gain is debilitating, it's actually hurting my lifespan. Oh well, I'll just pick up collecting stamps or I guess build the Lego Millennium Falcon. This is obviously going to make me more fulfilled. Yeah. Most common pieces of advice that fat people get about any kind of health promoting behavior is that they should change the amount of food that yeah, most of the time, that is what it is. It's literally diet. Uh, if you're somebody, like, this woman is obese, obviously. She's talked about it. So, if you're obese, that means that you're eating so much food that you're you're putting yourself in a realm of obese. There's nobody else that we can blame than that. You're eating too much calories. There's too many calories being consumed in a day. And if you're able to sustain that, which this person I've been, I've been seeing at least for a year, you have been able to maintain this weight for a year, meaning your diet is is too much, is too much calories. You're gonna have to adjust that. And I promise that if you did, you would lose weight. And you might consider that to be restriction or like, I don't know, unhealthy behavior, which is crazy because you're literally pursuing unhealthy behavior to put yourself in a body of this size anyway. So it's like, either way, you're just getting fucked. At least on my side, you're taking a small BBC compared. You're taking a BBC junior on my side. You might actually even like that one. The one you're taking is like massive, like Shaquille O'Neal type shit. Point of basically all of my content on this topic is basically that people can do health promoting behaviors that do not include uh, intentional weight loss. Yeah, but it's bullshit. Like you're... The, what you're advocating for, what you're advocating for is like what I hear the red pillars talk about or like any type or like Andrew Tate, right? I hear these people say these bullshit ass fucking claims. If you were honestly trying to tell people, like for instance, I'll give you an example. If you were trying to tell people, how do I make more money? How do I get more women? How do I pursue a healthy relationship and you hit that person with well you need to make millions of dollars you need to be a high value male you need to never never communicate with women you need to make sure that you're living with guys and you're talking about high value lifestyles and you're you're pursuing cryptocurrency and you're opening a business and you're opening that you're setting people up for failure because like 99% of people this is never going to apply to and it's such bullshit fucking information i hate it i hate it i hate it i hate it i was talking to a guy the other day and he said Andrew Tate gives really, really, really good financial advice. And I was like, that's not true. What are you fucking talking about? Definitely not true. Like, what is advice? Like, go invest in cryptocurrency and fucking open a business? If you are serious about somebody trying to pursue money, like making money in their lifetime, you would tell them, go to college. That's what you would say. You, you would say, if you get out of high school, go to college, get a degree. And then these people would usually say, okay, but you're going to go to get a degree and you're going to be like $30,000 in debt, which is the average debt here in America. That's fine because guess what? You graduate from college, you're probably going to make a million dollars on average more than the person that didn't have that college degree. And also, you're building yourself in college. You're becoming a more well-rounded well individual. Whereas somebody that's not in, in college and things like that, a lot of people shit on college. And I agree that there's a lot of devalue in college. But it's a more secured path than just somebody sitting there. I don't know, like, oh, I'm picking up the trades or whatever the fuck. I hear that a lot too. Go to trade school and this and that. Sure, you can go to trade school if you want to do. You want to do that. But it's like physical work, right? We're slowly but surely moving or moving away from physical work in our economy. And I'm not shitting on anybody that does physical work. It's great. I'm, I'm, I'm happy for you. But wouldn't it be better to not do physical work compared to doing physical work? Like if you're sitting there as a bricklayer and you have to bend over all fucking day, by the time you're 32, your back's going to be fucking gone. You know what I'm talking about? Or like you're sitting there all day on ladders. You're going to get fucking hurt. Wouldn't it be better to sit in an office and do work on a computer for nine hours? I don't fucking know. It could be depressing regardless. I get it. But I hear this all the time and it's such terrible advice talking about oh invest in crypto are you fucking stupid the, the the biggest by the way if you invest in crypto and you win big all that means is that somebody else lost their fucking money and most of the time it's going to be fucking you okay so don't sit there and think that you're going to be the one that makes the fucking money no you're not that fucking special i'm sorry to say that and the same thing for how do you make how do i get girls how do you get fucking girls dude it's like if you're listening to these guys, they're going to tell you make tons and tons of money, go to the fucking gym, you know, stop beating off, never, never hang out with your wife, don't move in with your fucking girlfriend, never get married. And it's like, some of this information is good. It might be, it might be really good to make more money. It might be really good to work out, but the message gets lost so fucking hard because you're listening. These most guys, this shit is not going to apply to them. Like make more money and open a business, bro. I'm like 
fucking $30,000 in debt and you're telling me to make more money. I'm making 50K a year. What the fuck am I supposed to do? Like, you know, most people, it's not going to apply to them. And most guys are not getting enough women. Like these are big social media influencers. Even though they actively shit on women, women are still going to want to have sex with them because they have a lot of fucking, and th these are the women that they attract to. They actively promote terrible, disgusting women. The women that actually want them to be like, you know what I'm talking about? Like these women that are literally Look, I'm not here to shit on these women, right? Obviously, the mental capacity of the women that they have on, on these red pill shows are terrible. And they know that they do, right? They, they specifically go for women that are like super low caliber on the spectrum that will agree with most of the things that they say because I don't know. Like, I don't know. They just don't have the mental capacity to disagree or whatever. And it's really fucking terrible because I watch these shows and I'm like, this these are the these are the women that they're shitting on. But like, if they invited any other woman that has like, I don't know, an average IQ or like women that are going to uh, disagree to some, to some degree or another, that would be way more beneficial. And they just invite women that are just going to agree with them consistently. And it's terrible because all it is is just reinforcing this bad behavior. But anyway, if somebody was like, David, how do I get a girlfriend or something like that? I would say, just do the basic stuff, like fucking work on yourself, right? Actually figure out how to take care of yourself. Do your dishes, wear cologne, okay? Shave, shave, shave yourself. Work, uh, physically speaking, go and get some fucking clothes. If you need to make more money, go ahead. Be a genuine person. Actually work on conversational skills. Don't be a fucking brick and sit there and think that you could just sit there and like have this woman, you know what I'm talking about? Don't vent all your feelings. Like actually have emotional communication. But a lot of people think that, oh, that's gay. It's gay to have emotional, I don't know. It's just dumb. And I hear like, you know, be a masculine man. Dude, it's okay to have feminine traits. And by feminine traits, it's crazy even to say this, like conversational skills. It's not a feminine trait, but a lot of people would consider that to be a feminine trait. It's not a feminine trait to be able to talk to women, dude. I don't know, man. It's terrible, dude. But this this is like that same information. Like what I'm hearing here is literally, I know that the main information that I could be telling people to how to be healthier is losing weight. And that's like 90 to 95% of obese people. That's what they can do. They would literally benefit from this wholeheartedly, okay? But I'm not going to tell them that. Instead, I'm going to tell them to not do that. And I'm going to tell them to do this other bullshit that might increase their health by like 5%. It's terrible, bro. Give them the 95 fucking percent. The shit that's going to apply to most people. It's always bad information. If you have to like, if you're talking to a general speak, a general speaking audience here and you're catering to five fucking percent, 95% of people, it's just going to fly over their head. It's not going to apply to anyone in the same way that the, 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 the financial advice Andrew Tate gives or the red pill advice the red pillars give. It doesn't work for 95% of people. Why are you giving this information? It's not worth it. It's not helping anybody. Anyway. And by the way, if you're in that 5%, it doesn't even matter. You If you're if you're thinner, go ahead. Pursue min-maxing behaviors. Go out there and fucking cut your fingernails and buy clothes that are going to fit appropriately and, you know, maximize your diet or whatever the fuck this person is going to say. That's fine. But if you're fucking 350 pounds and you're telling somebody to wipe their armpits more consistently, that's not going to help them be healthier. No, at least not in the long run. I don't know. That was a major threw a caloric deficit. I also think the idea that people need to change the amount of food that they eat rather than taking a look at the quality of food that they eat is not overly helpful. I think that you're dumb. I think that's a dumb take. I think I agree in the sense of like, I don't think people should be eating. If your calorie count in a day was 2000 and you chose to eat four quarter pounders with cheese, you could do that. It's not the best, but you could do that. I would always advocate to maximize the amount of calories. But if you're sitting here telling people that they shouldn't be looking at calories in, calories out, when that is the, the determining factor on how to lose weight, you are dumb. There's no other way to say that. Stupidity. I just think that the logic of, like, eat less is less helpful than telling people to, like, you know, have a more nutritious diet that includes a variety of macronutrients. I agree, but you're literally against the fundamental idea of losing weight, which is calories in, calories out. You can maximize your diet by eating more nutritious foods, and I would always advocate for that. But ultimately, you need to be eating less calories than what you need. And... Like, I just think that if an individual is engaging in various health-promoting behaviors and has a balanced, nutritious relationship... By the way, okay, hold up. I'm going to keep it a buck with you. If somebody says, I have a balanced diet, but they're 400 pounds, they don't have a balanced diet. There's no way you can do that. That's not how that fucking works. The very definition of balance would be that you're equilibrium you've 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 hit the point where you're eating right you're not eating right if you're 450 pounds with food that there's no point in telling them to eat in a caloric deficit <laughs> okay yes you're right if somebody's eating balanced meaning they're eating what they should be eating then there is no point of telling them they should eat in a, in, in a deficit but 
if you're somebody that's 450 and you that person's going, I'm eating a balanced diet, but they've maintained 450 for five years, guess what? It's not fucking balanced. That is literally too much. The the scale is not balanced out. Don't you fucking understand that shit? Like obvious fucking lee if somebody's eating balance they don't need to they don't need to worry about this shit that doesn't apply obviously it's like somebody is saying like oh i don't fit in the bmi i'm a big muscled up mommy i have tons and tons of muscle i know it doesn't fit you it's okay if it doesn't fit you you don't apply you're the exception if you're 450 and you're eating a balanced diet you're not eating a balanced diet you're 450 lose some fucking weight if we're talking about health rather than weight loss as an outcome we have a culture that's incredibly disordered around food and eating, and I think that becomes most prevalent when we start to talk about sweets. I constantly see this very black and white framing around sweets and sugar and any kind of indulgences. And what I don't think people realize is that when you create this dichotomy that sweets are bad, you shouldn't eat them, and if you do eat them, you should eat them as little as possible, that it creates this mentality for people where instead of being able to have a like healthy, reasonable relationship with those foods, instead it becomes something that's demonized. Healthy relationships with foods meaning you should be able to discern what foods are doing what to you okay like understanding that what you're eating here this balanced breakfast for instance like eggs toast and some other stuff right this is a balanced meal whereas you can eat this all of this food on the plate or you can eat one donut that's that's what a balanced diet is you should have the understanding that this is not, this is what this is, and this is what this is. I'm getting more here, so I'm going to choose that. I'm not saying you can't eat the donut, but if you can choose one or the other, you should probably eat the balanced diet, okay? It's okay every once in a while to eat those sweets. It is, but you should at least understand that this is not beneficial in the same way that this other food is, okay? Like, you can eat the food, but I also think it's super, it's really, really beneficial to understand what your foods are. So, people feel ashamed for wanting to eat those sweets. It's not about, like... It's, I want to eat a lot of things, right? I do. The other day I was at the grocery store. I saw so much good shit, dude. I saw these sugar cookies, man. I was like, oh man, I want to body wash this shit right now. My throat, I really deal, I real deal just want to deep throat like nine of these cookies, dude. And each one of these cookies was like 500 fucking calories. And I wanted them so bad. But guess what? I didn't, I didn't buy them because I knew I'm not a bitch. I'm not going to fucking buy that shit. I'm going to focus on what I want to eat in the sense of like nutritious foods. And it's okay to have foods that are terrible for you every once in a while. But at least you're consistent enough to lose weight or stay in, it, stay in the, 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 the amount of weight that you want to, okay? You shouldn't feel bad in the sense of like, oh, I want to eat these foods. Everybody wants to eat that, okay? It's okay. Like if you're looking at those foods, like a gay man would look at a BBC, that's fine, dude. But you have to have the willingness to go, I'm in a relationship with the food I'm right now and I'm getting so much value from the person that I'm with. I don't want to step out of my relationship with this food and suck on the big BBC of those sugar cookies. You understand? It's not beneficial for you. It's not. You should be staying with the relationship that you are. The person that you're with, aka the diet, it's the right one. Not all the time, but you know what I'm talking about. Like, if you know it's a good for you person, then you should stay. They might get into these habits, like hoarding those sweets. Binge I think that you probably shouldn't even have them at all. If you know you have an issue with sweets, and most of the time, a lot of people do, then don't have them in your house. It's so, I know some people, it might be harder for others. Like they live with their family and maybe like their family doesn't give a fuck. So they're just gonna have it in their house. That's really fucking tough. I understand. In those particular scenarios, it's like, it's either you just develop really, really good habits or you convince the family members around you that it's not good for you. And they have to change their lifestyles too, which should probably be good for them as well. But that's gonna be very difficult compared to just adopting better eating habits in general, at least being able to say no to certain foods. Changing on them and then, you know, purging later. I just don't know why the idea that all foods having a place on our plate is something that people think is so radical. Because some foods are just literally worse than others. Can we just not agree on that? Like, you could suck on rocks, you know, and you can get some nutritional value from that. Would you consider that a food? No, obviously fucking not. But this person, according to their logic, would consider that a fucking food. Is is dumb. It's a dumb way of thinking about that shit. Obviously, some foods are worse than other foods, right? Can we agree on that? Like, you could literally go in your kitchen right now and drink some canola oil. Is that good for you? Probably fucking not. But according to this person, all foods have a place on your plate. 
Do they? Do they fucking have a place on your plate? Obviously fucking not. I'm not trying to eat fucking bull testicles because I'm not gay and I also don't want to eat bull testicles. But the point I'm making is you should at least have the ability to not eat things that you don't want to eat and that's okay. And if you don't want something on your plate, it doesn't make you a bad person or like somebody that's like, I don't know, like why would you even say moralizing food? I don't like that food. Plain and simple. It's not good Today for me. Today was hard. The last thing I wanted to do this morning was measure my body and step on a scale. This makes me sad. Here's why. Bad body image days happen no matter what size you are, no matter what your pan size is, no matter what you weigh on a scale. But we have this idea that as we're on a weight loss journey, the less we weigh, the smaller our pan size, the better we're going to feel. Not necessarily true. In fact, often when people go on a weight loss journey, they notice that they become more obsessive with every pound, every inch, and it's never enough. And even when it is enough, even when you hit that goal weight, then you start fearing you're going to gain it back. That's true, but like the alternative is literally just being sedentary and doing nothing. So what is he like? So it's either you do something about your weight and maybe you obsess over it and, 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 and then you have some bad habits that maybe you need to break or you stay with the bad habits you already have, which make you obese to begin with and do fucking nothing. Okay, I don't know. These people are dumb. Which we know 90 to 90. No, you don't know. I don't, 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 don't say we know. Don't say that. Don't, stop saying that. Stop. I'm sick of that shit. I'm sick of people saying, we know this to be true. No, we don't. You know that, which is hogwash, but you, not we. You. Oh, wait. Stop putting me in Then there. you start fearing you're going to gain it back, which we know 90 to 95% of people do in the long term. So the fear is valid. But what if we could stop thinking of our bodies as good or bad dependent on the number on a scale or the number of inches that we've lost and started to look at more internal metrics like how we're feeling, how our stress is, how our energy levels are, how most- None of that shit is sustainable. Like, what are you fucking talking about? Sometimes you're- Sometimes you have a new norm of your body. Sometimes, a lot of the times actually, you don't even know that you're literally feeling like shit until you feel good. And I see this constantly, like the amount of times I've seen people that were very, very fat and then they lost weight and they realized, oh my God, I felt like shit for so long, but I didn't know because that was just how I felt. That was just my norm. And if your metric by these things is like, am I feeling good this day? I'm sure you do feel good, but your metric for feeling good is probably way different compared to how another person would feel. And you could probably feel a lot better if you lost that weight, but this person's not going to talk about that because obviously pursuing healthy behaviors in the realm of, do I feel good? I don't even know why we're pursuing that sometimes. Like if that was the case, like as long as I feel good while doing this, that's terrible. What if like the way you're feeling good is cheating on your wife? or sucking a BBC behind the fucking library, or doing drugs in the back of the alley. Like, it's just like, you. Like there are so many ways that you can interpret, I feel good, therefore I should pursue this. It's just terrible. It doesn't make sense to do these things. Like, obviously, if it's detriment to you and everyone around you, even though it makes you feel good, it's not good. You understand? Like, sometimes you're going to need to sacrifice and do the things that don't feel good for the end result to make you feel good. Like, the, you know what I'm talking about? Prolong that shit so that way, eventually, you get to the point. It's like having sex. Like, obviously, I can bust right now, but I know it's going to be way more satisfactory for you and me if I prolong it and I don't bust now and I'm sucking on your nipples and I'm grabbing your hair and I'm spanking you. Whatever the fuck you're into, dude. Everybody's into weird shit nowadays, right? And I'm doing this to ensure that the end result is better. You understand? Like, it's okay to do something you don't like now because you know that the later on result of it is going to be better. You know what I'm talking about? You can get 10% of the enjoyment now or you can get 100% of the enjoyment six, six months from now. You understand? Like, but do whatever you fucking want. This is terrible advice. I'm sick of listening to these people say this straight up hogwash, bullshit, terrible, disgusting information, but... <sighs> Their hair was nice. They got nice hair. And you got nice hair too. Your hair is very nice. Very luxurious today. You did something? What did you do differently? I don't know, but it smells really good. Really good. Anyway, um, we're going to end the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I'd appreciate it if everybody leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video. If you want to become a member of my channel, you can. If you don't want to, that's fine too. Um, I have a Discord server. If you want to join that Discord server, you can. We do stuff in there. I don't know. A whole bunch of stuff. You can talk to me if you want to. I don't know if you think I'm interesting or not. But anyway, you could do that. Um, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in cane. Like, you know, like a cane that you use to walk because let's be honest here, these people are going to need one of those by the time they're like 30, the amount of stress and trauma they're putting on their fucking body. Like they're just so adamant of staying in this overweight, just terrible, bad positions they're in. 
and they just don't want to do anything about it because guess what? You could pursue healthy behaviors while being obese, which is crazy. Sure, you can, but it's almost like, you know, what are you doing, dude? Come on actually do the things that are going to help you but i know you're doing the things that are helping you because you are here for a good reason you know that these people are crazy you're pursuing weight loss or you're pursuing healthy behaviors in the realm of weight which is always beneficial like if you want to mid max the weight that you're at you want to go to the gym you want to become a gym mommy a gym daddy become big muscular muscled up that's beautiful that's amazing or you want to lose weight that's great or maybe you're very, very underweight and you're gaining weight. Either way, it's fucking amazing. I appreciate you. I love you. I think that you doing the behaviors, even though it sucks a lot of dick going to the gym or eating these things that you obviously don't want to eat because you would much rather be deep throating some Oreos or whatever the fuck you want to be doing. It's better to do what you're doing right now, eating that chicken breast, eating that lean meat, eating just you know good quality sources of protein and other things. That's much more beneficial for you compared to sucking down a few Oreos, you know, than destroying your diet for the day. It's much more beneficial. And I love that you have the ability to discern that. I love that you have the ability to respect your body enough to give it what it needs instead of what you think it wants, which ultimately wouldn't even really be beneficial for you because I know you're going to blow up that bathroom afterwards anyway. That's just going to be bubble gutted like crazy, dude. But uh, anyway, I know that you're spectacular and you're beautiful and I care about you deeply. I really do. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it'll be linked down below. It's just my Instagram and my Twitter. If you want to follow me on these platforms, you can. And like I said, I have a Discord now. So if you want to join that Discord, you can. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys. 